Hey guys, how's it going? So normally, our videos are about our adventures, but sometimes our adventures are about learning something new. So today, we're going to learn about the Doppler effect. I'm Will, welcome to Young Adventures, and let's get smarter today. So the Doppler effect is the change in the frequency of a wave in relation to an observer who is moving relative to the wave's source. So in order to understand the Doppler effect, we're gonna have to look at a few of the definitions of the words in that definition. So for example, what is frequency? So frequency is how frequently something happens. So let's say that you're getting hit by a tornado punch. You, you can say that the frequency is how many times in a certain amount of time that you're being hit. So frequency can be a little bit difficult to understand because it's not something we have to think about a lot. When you get hit by a tornado punch, you might be worried about how hard the punch is, or you might be worried about how many times you get hit. But how many times per minute you get hit doesn't really make a difference. But there are some times in life that frequency matters a lot. One example is when you try and dribble a basketball. When you dribble a basketball, it doesn't really matter how hard you hit the basketball, and it doesn't really matter how many times you hit the basketball, but you have to match the frequency of, the, of how you hit it to the frequency of how the ball is bouncing. Another example where frequency really matters is when you're trying to swing on a swing set. When you're swinging on a swing set, it doesn't really matter how hard you swing, but it does matter that you match the frequency of your swinging with the frequency of the swing. The important thing for us to know now is that sound is made up of vibrations. Anytime an object vibrates, it creates sound, and that sound sounds different based on its frequency. So in music, different notes are created by vibrating an object at different frequencies. Here on the piano, you can see the strings getting hit. The one on the left vibrates at a lower frequency than the one on the right, so it's going to make a different note. This is how different frequencies are used to make music. But now we need to understand the Doppler effect. Okay, now we need to understand the Doppler effect. If we can understand the fundamentals of the Doppler effect, then we can understand how to make music with it. Um, we're going to need something that can make a lot of noise. This should help us visualize the Doppler effect. We can see the sound waves leaving the source. These rings show the frequency of the pressure waves moving through the air. We can see that the frequency of the waves leaving the source is the same as the frequency of the waves hitting the observer on the left and the right. So the sound is the same for both observers and matches the actual sound that the source is making. But look what happens when the source of the sound is moving. The waves stack up in the direction they're traveling in, and they spread out behind them. Let's back this up and look at it more closely. We can see the waves are leaving the source at the same frequency, but they're leaving from different places in space. It's like the new waves get a head start on the last wave since it has less distance to go to get to the observer, so we'll get there in less time. They're hitting the observer on the left with more frequency and the observer on the right with less frequency. The sound that these observers hear will actually be different. And a similar thing happens when the observer moves towards the source. The observer moves through the waves, so the waves hit them more frequently. This is a Doppler effect. So we know that sound is different based on the different frequencies, but we need to look at the numbers. So in music, we have different notes. So let's say we have a note C, we have a D, E, and G. These are the notes that we're going to care about. So these notes have actual numbers, or actual frequencies. So C is actually 261. 0.626 hertz. So if you hear a C note from an instrument, that means whatever is making the noise is actually vibrating 261.626 times every second. Hertz is 1 over seconds. So 200, about 260 times every second it's shaking back and forth. A D is 293.665 hertz. 
So the difference between a C and a D is just how fast, let's say on a piano, the string is vibrating. So a C, the string is vibrating about 261 times every second. A G, the string is vibrating about 392 times every second. So back and forth, almost 400 times every second. And if a string vibrates like that, your ear says, that sounds like a G. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. So if we know this, then we can use these frequencies, and then if we use a Doppler effect to change the frequencies, we can take something that sounds like a C. So if we have a car horn that equals a C, okay? But then we record two vehicles moving towards each other at a certain speed, okay? We can change the sound and make it sound like a G. So the equation we're going to use is that F prime equals V plus VO divided by V minus VS times the actual frequency. So if we know the frequency of our car horn, okay, which is going to be 261.626 hertz, and we know this is the speed of sound, and that's what both of these are, okay? So O, that's going to be our observer. So let's put probably a little observer here. We'll call that O. So that's our observer, and this will be our source. So that's the source of the sound, that's the observer, and they're walking towards each other. This person is making some noise towards that person. And this person is listening for the noise. Okay? So that's our observer, that's our source. So if we know the speed of sound, we know how fast our observer is going, and we know how fast our source is going, and we can find what the observer here. So this F prime, that's the observed frequency. And this is a frequency from the source. Okay? So we can use this equation we can figure out how fast these people need to go to change our notes. So the speed of sound, that's just a number. So V, speed of sound, is just 767.269 miles per hour. It's very fast. So in our first example, what we're going to do is we're going to let the source walk towards the observer, but we're going to let the observer stand still. So the observer is not going to move. Okay, so that means VO is going to be zero. Uh, frequency of the source, we're going to use the note C. And the frequency of the observer, we're going to use a note G. We want to hear a G, okay? And that's going to equal the speed of sound divided by the speed of sound minus the velocity of the source times a C. Okay, do we know the speed of sound? 767.269 Okay, miles. so we know the speed of sound. This is also the speed of sound, so we know that. We know what a G is. A G is 391 hertz, right? Mm -hmm. And we know what a C is. So we know everything in this equation except for the speed of the source. So that's what we're going to figure out. How fast does the source need to go to make a C sound like a G? Okay, so this is what we're trying to find. And we know all of these things. So now we can just plug them in. Okay, so the velocity of the source is going to be equal to the speed of sound, okay, times 1 minus the frequency of a C. What is that? We need a calculator. We'll give the answer. It's 255.177. So that's how fast our sound source needs to move for us to turn the C note into a G note. That's kind of a Parker square, isn't it? I mean, we got an answer, and it's kind of cool, but we can't really go that fast. So it's not very useful. But what can we do? So we tried to turn a C into a G. And why we tried to do that is... Mary had a little lamb goes E, D, C, D, E, E, E. This is the fancy guy. And then E, D, C, C. So these are the notes that we need to play Mary had a little lamb. So if we have, if we record a C, we got our C. And if we can just have a source move towards our observer, we can bump it up to a D and an E and a G. But the problem is going from a C to a D means we have to go over 250 miles an hour. So what can we do? Are you asking me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Just, Joy already said it. She said, you wrote down the fancy way. This is a fancy way? Mm -hmm. By adding in those two Gs, it's, you're saying, little lamb. You just can take out those Gs and make them all E's, and then it would just sound, it would be the same. Little lamb. Okay, so simplify the song. We'll get rid of this G. So now all we have to do is jump from a C to an E. 
let's see if that's easier. So we have this equation here, which is that the velocity of the source is going to be equal to the speed of sound minus the speed of sound times the note that we record, the note that the source is creating, divided by the note that we want to record. So we try that again, now just going from a C to an E. So now, the velocity of the source only has to be 158.287 miles per hour. Are we there? That's still pretty fast. Still too fast. Okay. But we know that the Doppler effect has to do with the relative speed, right? So it's not just the speed of the source, but it's the speed of the source relative to the observer. So what if we have the observer walking towards the source and the source walking towards the observer? So we have somebody making noise, and we have somebody listening, but they're walking towards each other at the same speed, then the speed will be half. So that means the velocity of the source equals now the velocity of the observer, the negative, okay? And that's going to be equal to half of this. So that is only 79.1435 35 miles per hour. So that's fast interst interstate speeds. That's mm -hmm. better. Can we do better? How about yeah. Can you make the person go faster who's walking towards the sound? So right now they're both going 80 miles an hour towards oh each other. Oh my goodness. Sounds like a really nice dangerous way to chicken. Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> Very fast. Okay. One more thing we can do. So if we look here, we're jumping from a C to an E. We need E, D, and C. So we need all of these notes, okay? And we're trying to record a C and jump to an E. But we know that the Doppler effect does make things higher pitch when they're moving towards each other. But also the Doppler effect can drop things in pitch if they're going away from each other. So what we can do is we'll record our middle note and then we'll drive towards each other to go up in frequency We'll drive away from each other to go down in frequency. But then to go from a D to an E is going to be 41.86 miles per hour. So now that is more reasonable. So two cars driving towards each other at 41.86 miles an hour will change a D to an E. That's, that's plausible. Yes. And then we can do it to go from a D to a C. If they're both moving away from each other, then the source equals negative observer equal call 46.98 miles per hour. Is that fast? That's not too fast. We can do that on a regular road. If we do this, we'll be able to record all the notes that we need to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Is that exciting? And it's really interesting because the source frequency is always going to be the same. So this person is going to hear the same thing every time. They're going to hear a D every time. It always sounds like a D. But the observer is actually going to hear a different sound than the sound that's being made because of the Doppler effect. And that is how you make music with the Doppler effect. Good luck on your inventions!